Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. And I got my, I got my uh, Marvin the Martian shirt. Do you know who that is? Marvin the Martian. Anyways, I'm going to be doing a recap. Not a recap. I'm going to do a reaction of all the games from last night. We're going to go look at the NHL Network. We're going to look at every game. And I'm going to kind of give my reaction to where each team is at after last night. What I thought about the games. Some of the games I didn't see tons of. I was doing a live stream last night with Off the Wall Hockey. If you know John from Off the Wall Hockey, if you don't, go subscribe to him. He's one of the best play-by-play -play guys there is out there. Love doing work with them. I did a, we did the Carolina game and uh, it was a blast. But I did it yesterday and I got such a good result. Uh, so many people writing me, telling me, oh, uh, that was wonderful. I loved it. So I thought, okay, I'll do it again. So we're going to look at all four games. We're going to get the reaction of it. You can come talk to me about it at the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show or Join me on my live streams <clears throat> with Peyton on the radio. I'll be doing a doubleheader tonight. Or Off the Wall Hockey. often do that. I do the analysis, I guess you'd say, for that. I go on with them and we just have much frolic. It's a lot of fun. Okay, let's look at the games from last night. Sub yourself up, by the way. You're going to be one of part of this. If you, you can't, go watch it if you don't sub. So sub up right now. Okay. Good. That was, didn't that make you feel good on your inside to do that? Always does for me. Okay. First game. Edmonton versus the uh, the Oilers versus the Kings. And uh, I had this game going in seven, or this series going in seven. But, and this is a wonderful thing about the playoffs, isn't it? Is every game makes you think otherwise about whatever you thought it's so back and forth especially if i if you predict it being seven games but this was a game where the oilers were just simply harder on their stick than the kings the kings did come out well in the first and smith who is in net mike smith of course uh there was a lot of question marks going into this game because he didn't have a great game in game one they went back to him again but Let's just face it, boys and girls. Last night, I mean, you have to agree. Last night, he 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 really rocked it. He played, especially the first period. He was catching everything, stopping everything. He was playing confident with the puck, and that's so important with Mike Smith. The game before, I thought he was maybe just a little too much worked up. Um, as he said it after the game, uh, he was trying to do too much, and he settled down in this game. He was playing the puck well. The Oilers were playing, after the first especially, all over the LA Kings. So give, give it to Woodcroft. Um, he obviously did some retooling. Uh, one of the biggest, and I said this before, I said this actually when I even did the video for my prediction for this series, the Oilers' biggest weakness, I find, is their play behind the net. And the last game that L.A. won, they exposed that. Almost all their games, if you look at the tape, almost all their goals, I should say, if you look at the tape, were coming from in behind the net. Now, it seems that the way the Oilers combated this, and, and this is what they were doing the regular season after Tippett was fired, was just don't screw around with the puck behind the net at all. Um, work if you like he the defenseman, the defensemen for the Oilers are not great at getting the puck off people's sticks. So what Woodcroft seems to have done, or and they were doing in the regular season, but didn't do last game, was they were getting he was just getting the first defenseman to take the body. That's it. Get the puck loose, and then either another defenseman or the centerman comes in and strips it. Don't try to do too much at one time. And I thought last night they did very well at that. Um, Darnell Nurse had a great game, which is wonderful because, of course, he was having injury problems going into this game. Leon Dreisaitl looked like a beast last night. Um, 
If they play like this, Jesse Puglia Harvey pot is one. Woo! Everybody that's an Oilers fan takes a sigh of relief here, don't they? Uh, he's been snake bit the last little while. I think he's playing fine. Um, Oilers fans, if you're out there, first of all, sub up here because I know there's a big discrepancy as to Jesse Puglia Harvey and how good of a player he is. If you're an analytics person and you look at what Jesse Puglia Harvey does, and then you look at what he does on his ice, on the ice, Jesse's always in position. He's, he's never in the wrong position. He's never going to be a physical guy. So guys that generally don't pay attention to analytics and just eye test it are probably going to look at him like missing checks, uh, not laying the body in certain areas and stuff like that and say he's doing nothing. There's a guy like Mark Spector who says that. And I don't agree. I just don't think he's that type of player, but he can be a very effective two-way player. In fact, I think analytically, he's an excellent two-way player. And he finally potted one last night. McTavid got his third. Evander Kane uh, potting two last night is awesome. Uh, they, they, they just played the best the Oilers can play last night. And L.A., Simply didn't have an answer for it. I'm going to go into the Edmonton Oilers here. Uh, Zach Cassian was getting hit. Have you noticed Zach Cassian looks like he's back to the old Zach Cassian, at least physically again? That's huge. Absolutely huge for the Edmonton Oilers for him to be able to do that. Um, I, don't, I didn't really see anybody that had a poor game last night, which is often the case when it's a 6 nothing game, right? But the big thing for me is now it's going back to L.A. They're in their home arena. Is L.A. going to get be able to get back to playing that behind-the-net presence against the Oilers and winning the battles? Because that's what they're all about. More uh, I follow has turned into that. I mean, these guys are not huge, big players, but they play the stick well. And they play with all the effort that you can give. Like LA Kings will always will will outwork you if you let them. So we'll see if the Oilers can keep that high pressure, high. And that was the other thing. Gaining a good way to make sure that the other team is not playing in behind your net. Play in their end of the ice, and uh, the Oilers kind of really rocked the possession offensive possession last night. And that and when they're doing that, they're going to win most against a lot of really good teams. Um, L.A. is a good team. I think they're going to have a decent I, – I, I'm sure they'll have a bounce back, especially in their own arena. But it's a lot to ask for guys like Dursey playing 22 minutes a night over the long – over a seven-game series that these guys are going to hold up. Um, Edler's pretty – you know, he's on the old side – and then you have a lot of really young players as well. But LA's got to get back to making this a war again. And I'm sure they're going to try to do that uh, when they play against Edmonton at home. However, huge win for the Oilers. Um, excellent the way they played. I'm, I'm left thinking that my prediction that the Oilers would win this series now is looking pretty good. But you know how it works. They go into LA. They... Uh, L.A. gets on them early, finds a way to get in behind the net a little better. They make their own adjustment, and all of a sudden we're like, I don't know, are the Oilers going <laughs> to? So we'll see what happens. That's what's the beauty. That's what's the beauty of the playoffs, right? I like I liked, uh, I liked the Oilers a lot last night. I actually picked them last night. Um, I actually did very well at bpalpicks.com. I'm a professional handicapper. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, first of all, follow me up here, Oilers fans, Kings fans, Wild fans, Blues fans. Give me a follow. And if you like making money, we tend to do that at bpalpicks.com. Comment in the comment section. I'll send you a link where you can play around there for free and see what I'm talking about. All right. Wild versus the Blues. And wow, this what an opposite game. This is right. This I think the big story for this game, and I was doing a live stream, but I was moving back and forth, checking out this game because this was a really exciting game for me. I wanted to see um, how the Wild were going to respond to the big bad Blues, 
Uh, that's what they are, right? That's what the blues come out and say, or, well, not come out and say, but that's the identity, I should say, that the blues have made for themselves since their last cup. And that's the way they're going to win a cup. By the way, the great Wayne Gretzky, I don't know if you know this, the great Wayne Gretzky picked St. Louis Blues to make the finals out of the West. But last night, there was a big question mark about last night. And that was Flurry. My gosh, if you went over to the Wild, uh, and I do, I like to talk to all the fans. I like talking to all the teams. I send this out to all the teams. If you went over there to, uh, to the Minnesota groups in Facebook and Twitter and all of those sort of things like that, you would think that Flurry was the worst goaltender that ever graced the planet with a lot of people. And uh, kudos. For putting, trying to make, trying him again. Everson put him in again. Because I think, and you can tell me, sub up and tell me what you think in the comment section, Wild fans. I believe that if the Wild have a chance to win the cup here, Flurry at his best is going to give you a better chance than Talbot at his best. A much better chance, actually. It might be the only chance. Um, I like, I like uh, Minnesota as a team, but really they're not the deepest team in the world, and um, and I know Minnesota fans are going to argue with that. I'll tell you what, Minnesota fans—they are amazing. Their team is the best in the land, and that's it. No matter what, you can't say a darn thing about them usually. Um, but when you look at the overall makeup of their team, they have a lot of guys that you wouldn't say, hey, I I'm going to go grab this guy because I want Hartman to be my number one center to win a Stanley Cup with. You know, Eck is getting better and better all the time, and I absolutely love him. But can we put him at number one center status last night? I mean, after last night, you would think so. He was freaking a beast, uh, of course. Um, almost got a hat trick but wasn't called back. Uh, but that's not really at this point. I still think Eck has a long ways to go, but he doesn't have much playoff experience. And um, they're rather small. You got Zuccarello, you got Fiala. I mean, Fiala hasn't really been lighting it up, lighting it up yet. That's kind of the worry. His size, is it going to translate into the playoffs? Uh, Tyson Jost is gamer, but he's pretty small. It's a fairly small team overall. And... Um, you know, they can get worn down. But when they're playing a possession game like they played last night and Marc-Andre Fleury is playing as well as he is, they're going to win a lot of games. And they've also got these wonderful one-shot shooters like Kirill Kaprizov, who even though they were outshot 34-28, to 28, they still pot them. They're one of those teams that they generally don't get a lot of shots, but the shots that they do get, are usually high quality shots. That's the way Everson, uh, unlike a lot of great coaches out there, I don't think one is any, it depends on, we were just talking about LA. McClellan's not really like that. He's like shoot from everywhere. But Everson wants his guys to gain possession, find the spots, and shoot. And last night, it worked really well. So I got to ask you guys questions. What do you think now that Flurry is in there? Do you keep on? You got to keep on rolling with them. Are you are you breathing a little easier now that Flurry had a really good game? And for St. Louis fans, we're going now back to St. Louis, feeling pretty good, right? You got you 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 split it. I mean, just about everybody will tell you if you can split it at, at on the road in the playoffs, you're feeling pretty good going home. Now, of course, there's some issues. Letty got injured. Uh, what do you think? I didn't get to watch it a lot. What did you think of Rosen last night? Hey, it was a minus two. That doesn't really tell you all that much. But, I mean, to me, I'm a little concerned when you've got guys like Cal Rosen playing 16 minutes a night. You know, I'm not a huge Letty guy, but it would be – I'd be a little more comfortable if I'm St. Louis to have Letty back. I don't know how long he's going to be out for. But that's a difficult guy to lose. What did you think of Billy Huso last night? You know, maybe it wasn't his best. But I think the overall defense probably is what I'm going to hear 
from St. Louis wasn't on par last night, but it was only one game. The good thing is that Kairou potted one last night, and I say that because Jordan, even though they lost, I think if you're really taking positives out of this, having Jordan Kairou didn't have a great second half and of the season and having him hopefully get back on the score sheet and keep that going goes a long way i think for st louis possibly being able to pull this through st louis is biggest um advantage over any team is their offensive depth their four top four lines maybe the best in the league actually wayne gretzky said that's why he picked them to make it to the finals is they just have a fantastic top four lines so that's a that's a bonus. That's a positive you can take from it. Tarasenko potting one is always good. Get that goal out of the way so you can keep on moving. Going back home now, St. Louis is going to make some adjustments. And, of course, you've got Craig Berube, who is a fantastic coach. They've done it before. I mean, they're certainly anywhere, nowhere near out of it. And while the Wild better be prepared because I, if I know, you know, we know Craig Berube. This team's going to be out for blood the next game. They're going to be pissed about this. They didn't play their game the way they need to. This is a game, this is a team that needs to come out in four waves and just ride you, ride you, ride you in the offensive zone. And it doesn't appear that that happened last night. So, Blues fans, sub up. Tell me what you think. What do you think of, uh, do you think they ki- they keep on going with Huso, right? They're not putting Bennington in. I don't think they're going to try that. Um, If uh, Huso has a bad game, maybe they go that direction again. I don't know. But um, what did you think of Huso? What did you think of your team overall? What can they do better? And uh, Minnesota fans, how are they going to combat that huge aggressive four-wave style that they're going to have in St. Louis? What do you think, guys? Tell me in the comment section. Sub up and let me know all about it. I I I was so on the fence about this series, and I mean that just doesn't really. Last night didn't make it any. These last two games didn't make it any easier to figure out what's going to happen. All right, Lightning versus the Leafs, and this one honestly, I was right in the middle of my live stream the whole time I was doing this uh, game, so I had to go back and forth in this. But there's a lot of things I can say about this game. First of all. The one thing that I that is encouraging for Toronto fans, I would have to think, is that Toronto didn't give up in this game. Uh, you know, Tampa Bay was up 4-1, and then the third period, Mitch Marner and Alexander Kerfoot potted a couple, one on shorthanded. Okay, they probably weren't coming back in that game, but you know as well as I do, Toronto fans, that this was kind of an issue that I, that. Toronto, I I don't think they give up, but previous playoffs, to me, it seemed like they would get down on themselves and that would be it. But um, I did get to watch more of the third period. And what I saw was a Toronto team that never stopped battling. And uh, that is encouraging, no doubt about that. One thing I wasn't able to see, and I'd like you guys to tell me in the comment section, is what did you think of Campbell last night? This is, this is the biggest issue in Toronto, right? How is Campbell going to hold up? Now, it was only one game, of course, and he was good in the first game. Easily could have a bounce back here. Um, I did hear a lot of Twitter stuff about Laya Bushkin really not looking good last night. Um, and, you know, of course, when you lose 5-3, there's a lot of guys that look like they were overmatched. It's just the way it is. Tampa Bay gets to kind of it gets to be happy to come back to their home arena 1-1 out in Toronto. I think they would take that all day. And here's the here's something a little okay, you can take this for what you want. And sub up, comment in the comment section if you agree or disagree with this. But I find Tampa is a very savvy team in a way. The last game against Toronto, they didn't come out too hard. I I wouldn't say they threw the game, but Tampa Bay, and actually it was funny because uh, Sheldon Keefe even said after the game, the first game, that, you know, this is not the Tampa, that wasn't the Tampa game, 
Bay Lightning team that we were prepared for. And Tampa has a way sometimes of saying, you know what, it's the first game. There's a, there's a really good chance we don't win this game. There's something about the energy in the first home game for any team that guys are just going to go out flying. And it almost gets to the point where teams like Tampa Bay know how to preserve themselves for the whole, for the whole series is that you're going to have to win to win in the playoffs. That's part of being a savvy team and winning in the playoffs. You honestly almost say we're going to try to hold back, hope our goaltender can help us out this first one. If we can manage to get through it, then we'll guild balls out in the second. And that's what I, it appeared to me that that's what they did. Toronto, of course, came out as hard as they possibly can. They're, they're the team that is all the pressure is on them. They definitely don't want to lose the first one. So they went out like crazy. And then Tampa Bay said, okay, we're going to, we're grabbing the second. They, they gave a lot of energy last night. We preserved a little bit. Now we're going to show this Toronto team what it means to be a champion. And uh, they did. They did. You got Perry that scored last night. Huge for uh, Tampa Bay to get goals from their bottom lines. Kucherov looked a lot better. <clears throat> Kucherov did not look good the first game at all. He looked great this game. All of the point potted one. There's talks about injury problems with him and stuff like that. But tell me what you think. You, I don't, like, teams have to know that you're not going to win going balls out every game. You're not. And and a lot of people think, well, okay, well, you got to try as hard as you can every game, sort of. You also have to real pick your spots, and I think Tampa Bay picked their spot there. Now they get to go where Toronto is all the pressure is on them. They get to go home, and I think what you're going to see in the next game from Tampa is not what you saw in Toronto. You're going to see them play hard, but they're not going to throw everything they got in one game. They don't have to. They don't have to, and they know that you have to. There's a balance that has to happen to win a cup, because if you pooch out by that by the fi in the finals, you're done. That's why you see a lot of finals that are like it, one in five games, four games, stuff like that. So that's my take on that. Let's look at the next series. Um, I still I got Tampa in that. I still got Tampa in that. I just think that. Uh, Toronto's got some spectacular players, but their overall depth just isn't there. And finally, the Hurricanes and the Bruins. And this, I did this live, I did this as a live stream with uh, Off the Wall Hockey. And uh, I don't know, I mean, it's, I, I kind of wish I would have did a live stream for the other games. Although, um, I, anytime I can get on with Off the Wall Hockey, I'm happy. But Boston, man, it's. Uh, they could be playing a little possum here. That's the word I was looking for too. Boston fans, sub up and let me know. This is an incredibly experienced team. If you notice these two games, Boston came out flying the first period, hoping to get ahead and then try to lock it down after that. And it didn't work. They couldn't pot one. Uh, of course, Ranta... Ranta played well in the first period, but then he, he got injured. And now there's a window of opportunity for Boston going back. You have these, the, the uh, young goaltender, uh, Coach Dukov, now going to be in. Apparently, I don't know, Ranta might be back. Uh, he got hit in the head area. He had the bleeding out of his mouth and stuff. I'm not sure if there's con concussion issues. I'm not a doctor. I don't know. But what I do know, and Carolina fans, I'm going to send this out to you, and you heard the video when I was doing predicting who was going to win the series is, I said that watch it, Ranta by the second game will be injured. Because he always is. I don't know what it is with that guy, man. Um, bad luck? Like, I didn't do anything. I'm not some, you know mind reader or you know reader of the stars 
Francis always gets injured two to three games into what if you play him too much. Always. And I thought if Coach Cuff, Coach at Cuff, the rookie has to get in there. I thought Boston had a chance here. Now, that being said, Boston fans, you had your own injury, didn't you? Lindholm got just absolute, maybe one of the greatest hits I have ever seen last night. Um, and it was clean. There was Svechnikov caught Lindholm coming out with his head down. I know there's going to be Boston fans that disagree with me, but there was nothing wrong with that hit. Nothing. And I, I think that Svechnikov got some serious whiplash there. Or, or sorry, Lindholm got some serious whiplash there. It doesn't look like he banged his head so much as he got whiplash. And if he did, you know, he's probably not coming back. So that's going to be a huge issue going into the next round. I mean, I think now I, I did mention something about them playing possum. And I think it was possible that Boston didn't really throw the first two games so much, but we're preserving it. They know this is going to seven. They they have it in their minds that this is going seven. And if we're going to have a chance, we got to win this at home. We got to get the two at home. That'll put, that'll put and, and I said it in my video when I did my prediction video, you watch. Boston's going to be running those goaltenders because if they can get their third stringer in there and they go home and they play the kind of game that Boston can play, they got a little bit of a chance. I mean, looking at the two games that they played in Carolina, though, it doesn't look like they have a chance, does it? And I, 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 I have to say, in this series, maybe I just put too much emphasis on the goaltending because Carolina doesn't need much of a goaltender to win. They play a system that makes their goaltenders look exceptional. I don't know why I didn't think about that when I did my prediction videos. Like, um, there's... Delkovich is an average goaltender. They made him look spectacular. You saw it in Detroit. He played okay, but he played well. He's a good goaltender, but he's not an elite goaltender. But he put up elite numbers. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Anderson, I wouldn't put him as an elite goaltender, but he put up elite numbers, and so did Ranta in the regular season. Very, very good. But Carolina's system makes goaltenders look good. So what does Boston have to do now? Uh, Carolina fans, uh, what what's Boston's going to come at you with everything this next game, everything they got, it's going to be a battle. Um, the question is going to be, are they going to be able to get through to this young goaltender? Are they going to find a way to round it? Now, I know I predicted Boston in this one, but I'm hating myself for it for several reasons. A Rod Brindamore led team is going to be fitness, peak fitness team all the time. And uh, I don't think Carolina is going to wear down in this. And this is, a, I think, it looked like to me the Boston's biggest problem is, is they just couldn't keep up to the strength. This team is super, super strong. Brenda Moore is one of the best conditioned athletes in the world. And he has a way of encouraging all of his players to become that as well. And it appears that they have. Even with Coach Takoff, I think this could be over, but we'll see. Tell me what you think, Boston fans. Do you think that they have a chance at all? What can they do? Carolina fans. Sorry, I didn't mean, I didn't, like, I have Carolina fans messaging me right now and saying uh, that I put voodoo on Ranta. Well, did, did I put voodoo on Ranta every single time he gets injured? No. I was just looking at the results of his previous ways of being and what happens, and it did happen. That's all. It was purely logic. That's all. All right. That's my full 42. Man, I went long on this one. I didn't even think I had this much to say, but I guess I had a lot to say. Sub yourself up, guys. I'm going to be doing these all playoffs. Have a great day. Take care. Bye.